Hello, and welcome to the University of Alberta's opening up copyright instructional module on Nintendo V Go Cyber. Ah, video games. An escape from reality that allows us to put off our chores for just... Jimmy, dinner's ready! Give me a few more minutes, okay mom? In the real world, video games have become part of a global multi-billion dollar industry fueled by consumers from all demographics, and its momentum shows no signs of slowing down anytime soon. Companies like Nintendo have played a major role in its sustained growth and have developed measures to prevent others from profiting off their hard work and success. So, what happens when other companies circumvent these measures to try to make a few coins of their own? This module will explain what technological protection measures are in Canadian copyright law, how they have been interpreted in court, and how they ended up costing a company in Windsor, Ontario $12.7 million. As of 2012, provisions in Section 41 of Canada's Copyright Act have made it illegal to bypass, or circumvent to be specific, any effective technology, device, or component that are intended to control access to a work, or that are intended to protect a copyright holder's exclusive rights over the use of a work. This definition is broad and can thus be interpreted by courts in many ways. This is where Nintendo and a company called Go Cyber Shopping come into the picture. In 2016, Nintendo filed a claim against Go Cyber, stating that the company was violating the Copyright Act by selling devices that allowed Nintendo DS, 3DS, and Wii gaming systems to play pirated copies of their video games. Arr! Go Cyber was accused of violating Section 41.1 of the Copyright Act, which states that you cannot circumvent a TPM, offer services primarily intended to circumvent them, or market those services. It also says you cannot manufacture, import, or distribute, for sale or rent, any technology intended to circumvent TPMs. This case was the first time the Copyright Act's rules for TPM circumvention were tested. What exactly was a TPM, and what counted as an effective technology for controlling access to a work? Nintendo said that they were using multiple methods to control access to and use of their copyright protected material, including the shape of the Nintendo cartridges, which were designed to fit only Nintendo systems, like a key and a lock, a copy protection code or header data on game discs, including Nintendo logos that had to be validated before the game could be played. Nintendo registered copyrights on this code. And finally, data encryption, or scrambling, of game content that only the gaming console was supposed to be able to decrypt and read. There are many other examples of technological protection measures that you may have seen. Some TPMs are for controlling access, and others are for controlling use, or copying of a work. The Copyright Act says that TPMs can be any effective technology, so it stands to reason that a court would consider what this phrase means when deciding what is and is not a TPM. This is what happened in the Nintendo case. In their defense, Go Cyber did not believe that the shape of Nintendo cartridges was a form of protection. They also provided a narrow definition of circumvent to assert that they were not going around or impairing Nintendo's protection mechanisms, but were in fact replicating them. The federal court disagreed with Go Cyber on two main grounds. First, since the act says a TPM is any effective measure, the shape of the cartridge is counted as a TPM. This is different than the interpretation in the UK, where a TPM is defined as something that transforms a copyrighted work through encryption or other means. Second, the intent of section 41 in the act was not to exclude replication from the definition of circumvent, so duplicating the measure just to get around it is still a violation. As an example, the court noted that a burglar who makes a copy of a key to get into someone's house is still a burglar. Go Cyber lost their case. They were found accountable for violating Nintendo's copyright on its header data, and for circumventing their technological protection measures. Nintendo was awarded more than $12.7 million in damages. In his commentary on the case, Michael Geist points out that the court's allowance of shape as an effective TPM is alarmingly broad. It could allow a rights holder to claim that any physical or digital aspect of the container for a work is a technological protection measure, since TPMs do not need to transform the work itself in any way. In essence, this case sheds light on how users of copyrighted material run the risk of violating the Copyright Act by intentionally circumventing any technological protection measure to gain access to copyrighted material, and they cannot rely on fair dealing provisions as valid reasons for doing so. As a result of providing services and goods that circumvent TPMs, Go Cyber Shopping faced a heavy fine for selling devices that modify Nintendo systems. The federal court's ruling in this case means that even alternative uses of Nintendo hardware, 
like using the platform to write your own game, are now less accessible to users. In light of what is and is not allowed, Nintendo claimed that GoCyber knew they were making it possible to violate copyright, and were advertising their services for that purpose. The limited exceptions for circumvention of TPMs did not apply in this case. You should now be able to describe and recount the arguments in the Nintendo v GoCyber case, and recognize how a broad interpretation of protections and a limited interpretation of exceptions was applied in this case. This has been the University of Alberta's opening up copyright instructional module on Nintendo v Go Cyber. Thank you for your attention.